Australian economy. But right now, let's bring in our guests uh, to talk more on the super tax and to talk about business and mining. Uh, and we are joined by the executive chairman of the Brisbane Mineral Exploration Company, Diatream Resources, and he joins us here in Hong Kong. Welcome uh, to the city here. Let me talk to you about uh, what's going on with the super tax, Tony. I mean, how do you feel uh, as a miner being taxed 40 percent of your profits going forward? Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me here again. That's wonderful. Uh, number one, I'm an explorer and uh, everyone's talking about the miners mm -hmm. but no one's talking about the explorers and the explorers are the R&D they're the engine room of finding mines and mines are short in Australia even though uh, they need a lot more so the position is basically that uh, uh, the treasurer is offering 30 cents in the dollar uh, return expiration. Mm. The problem is not so much the return on, on mo uh, monies expended. The problem is the raising of capital, which is extremely difficult in Australia for junior miners. So if they can't raise capital, and we've been asking for flow through shares now in Australia for at least uh, 10 years, which has worked very well for the Canadian industry, but the, at the moment the Australian exploration industry has an arm tied up behind its back. Okay, well, let me ask you about foreign investment. Yeah, it seems like yeah, the arm is tied up behind the back. Doesn't this deter foreign investment going forward? That's what you're hearing from Rio Tinto, BHB, and all the other miners, be they yeah. junior or senior. It's a, it's a no-brainer, quite frankly, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. The position is that uh, in one foul swoop, the Labor government of Australia has mm -hmm. managed probably to curtail exploration uh, funding and certainly mining funding. But the problem is not so much uh, miners because they make income, but the vast majority of companies are explorers finding new mines like ourselves, mm -hmm. and that has been detrimental. Hey, Dan, I'm going to bring you back in here. Let's talk about the trickle-down effect. I mean, you've been talking to miners on the ground in Australia, I mean, and explorers as well. I mean, how concerned are they? How angry are they? And what sort of words are you hearing? Well, um, I think yesterday I used uh, the phrase uh, verbal spray. That came from uh, Mitchell Hook, the mineral, uh, Minerals Council of Australia head. Uh, the big thing too with this, uh, with this proposed uh, tax is, uh, and one thing you'll find a lot of the uh, miners talking about is the flow-on effect. Now, mining ac accounts in terms of raw term about 8% of GDP, 8 to 10%, but it's the flow-on, that multiplier effect, it's the trucks, it's the infrastructure. It's also the, uh, additionally you've got now uh, set, uh, Aboriginal communities also questioning uh, the mining tax and the effect it will have on them. So at all levels of government, both the state and federal, there is certainly a lot of angst about it. But uh, again, it's one of those things which getting detail on the modelling is also uh, becoming a lot tougher as well. So it, it's just one of those things where I, I believe 70 mining companies are now going with, through, with Treasury to do the modelling process. But as Tony uh, said earlier, it's the high risk of the explore, exploration which, uh, where, where the cost of uh, finding funds is, is extremely difficult. So it does I act bet. as a deterrent. Yeah, so how do you fight back then, Tony? I mean, are you lobbying the government to maybe rethink their choices here? There's, there's really um, three, three options for you. You can lobby government and hopefully they'll listen. They haven't listened for the last 10 years, so I don't expect they'll continue to listen. Mm. The, the second thing is you can take on the uh, expiration and just accept the cost. Or what happened back in the year 2000 and the end of the 1990s when 80 or 90 percent of the companies, the junior companies, walked and went to Asia, went to Africa, went to Canada, South America. And they're still there. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, uh, we have Kevin Rudd and Wayne Swan saying that the reason behind the super tax is to rebalance the economy because, as they saw it, it was the mining industry that, that were the haves and then the rest of Australia, which uh, didn't make as much money during that time. And, and in fact, right. that was the reason, you know, you saw bit interest rates higher because of the, uh, the wealth mm. of the mining mm. sector. So what about that argument coming from the government? Is that believable? Uh, not really. I mean, they, uh, I don't know the exact figures, but I think it's about $9 billion a year in royalties and that's not including any income tax that the companies pay either mm -hmm. so uh, Australia has one major industry it's mining and exploration and uh, frankly uh, they've just managed to put the mockers on on their biggest industry okay well let me talk to you about your current uh, currently your share price and, and quickly since we have about 40 seconds left to commercial break but diatrium is down about 46 percent on the year so far compare that yep. to I really don't know why because we're increasing <laughs> our resource. It's now over 100 million. We're going into scoping studies. We finished the scoping studies. Mm -hmm. We're going into feasibility to mine. It's one of the very few zircon deposits of the world. Yep. 
and Zircon is going to increase in price. Right. And the Zircon Chinese realize this because they're coming behind us very heavily. Okay, so you might be getting more Chinese funding, man. Uh, exactly, we oh. will be. Okay, Tony, thank you for dropping Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Tony Fowden of uh, the Brisbane Mineral Exploration Company, Dietary Resources. All right, we're going to go to break here on Asia Confidential.